Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters by Kayun Games. The game plays roughly two to three players, is for ages 13 and up, and plays about an hour to an hour and a half. And in the game Shadows, Hero, and Heroes, and Monsters, you are going to be playing kind of a TCG mixed with like a tactical card game. You're going to be gathering a hero, their main deck or current deck, and of course their library, and you'll be able to customize the library if you'd like, uh, and uh, you're going to be battling against another player or players, as well as a monster or monsters. This is a PvPVE game, a player versus player versus environmental game, in which you're not only fighting against the other players, trying to gain victory points, but also against the monster in the middle of the field attempting to attack back at you. It's a game where you're going to be gathering cards from your current library, utilizing those cards in phases, attacking the monster or other players. The monster will have a chance to attack back, as well as the other players, attempting to down your hero as well as attempting to down the monsters and gathering those victory points, gathering gold and experience as well that will let you gather new cards from your library as well as a gathering new items for your hero to then be basically highly equipped to utilize the cards in your specific library. And of course, once the monster is defeated uh, or you gain a certain number of victory points, the game will end and whoever has the most is the winner after checking your secret victory condition. That's the basic idea of the game. Let's talk about setup and then of course, how to play, and finally my review. To set up a game of Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters, you're going to first have each player select a character hero. That hero is going to come with a unique specific current library or current deck of cards that you'll be placing down, as well as current starting items. It's going to give you a basic item from the shop, a basic specific sh shop item, as well as a starter flat-footed slash dodge card, and their specific unique ability, like for instance, Roland here has Song of Roland. Additionally, you're going to give the leader card to the leader or first starting player and a deck of cards for their library. Now there's two ways to do your library. One is you check the starting card, which will determine your starting library for the first beginner game. Or if you've bought into booster packs or skill packs, you can kind of customize your own library. Additionally, you're going to give yourself uh, damage tokens that you can use specifically for your character to damage monsters and other players. And then you're going to set up the monster deck. Now, the monster deck's pretty simple. You get a one, two, and a three monster. You'll put them from the bottom to the top, from the highest number to the lowest number on top. And then you're going to flip over the top monster in the middle of the play area. Go ahead and also shuffle the monster cards and uh, deal out one card for each player based on the leader's discretion. Take the bounty cards and place them next to the monster and then give every single player a round guide. Additionally, place all the XP and gold and victory points aside within reach of all players and of course the shop deck. You'll take these shop neutral items, shuffle them up, and deal out three to form the open area in which you can buy items. Set the die and any other tokens aside that you may or may not need to utilize, as well as the rule book, and you are ready to begin the game, Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters. Playing the game is actually rather simple. The first thing you'll do is you'll check to see who has the leader card. Whoever has that card is going to choose either XP or gold, and then every player will get one of those items, except for the first round of play. Then you're going to set up a monster card for each player. Basically, you'll draw cards equal to the number of players as the leader, and then divvy one face down to each of those players. That's basically what is going to happen whenever the monster resolves in phase three of the combat step, or whenever a player hits a monster. Uh, then after that, the team, uh, team up phase is done, followed next by the plan. You'll check your hand size, which is basically going to be three uh, plus one per defeated monster. So the first monster is what was going to give you three cards for your hand from your current deck. The next monster is going to give you four and the final will give you five. So you'll get more cards as the game progresses. Choose those cards from your current library or current deck, I should say, and place them into your hand and place the rest of the cards back onto your current deck space. After that, every player should have the number of cards equal to the number on the monster card in the middle of the field. Um, you know, so three for the first, four, and then five. Next step is combat, and combat is going to resolve in six different skill phases, and each of the cards that you've gathered is going to have a number on the top left-hand corner of the card, whether it be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And uh, you're going to play, starting with the leader and progressing clockwise, those cards in that order. Ones will go first, and then they'll resolve, then twos will go, then threes will go, and then fours and fives and sixes. However, the monster is always going to respond at the end of the third phase, or the th third skill phase, 
phase of combat, provided the monster hasn't been attacked by that player. So if there is one player who hasn't attacked the monster after phase three, the monster is going to resolve their skill card and you will check the monster card to determine what the monster does. So for instance, if the monster is Zerul and it has a claw, then that monster is going to attempt to do two damage to that specific player. Then you'll discard that card. And whenever a player hits a monster during those phases, the monster is going to draw a response card and you'll check to see what it does based on the symbol and what that symbol relates to on the monster card. And players resolve those cards in order. Some of the cards are attacks, others are going to be uh, self-attachments or creatures or objects, predictions, spells, and responses. A prediction will allow you to predict what another player, card is in, uh, what another player has in their hand. So if I have, have a one card and I play it and it says predict four or five, I can say, hey, you, Callie, do you have a four in your hand? And if she does, you'll gain some type of benefit, and you'll also gain the other benefits the card provides. Spells will do damage, and attacks will do damage as well. Responses are cards that can be played out of turn when being attacked or when something unique happens based on the card. And then there's a bunch of stationary cards that you can basically have once around abilities that you can leave on the field. Some will happen once, some will happen once per round. And then as you go through, after the sixth uh, phase or skill phase is done in combat, then you're going to resolve all the cards um, that have any turn abilities, et cetera, et cetera. After the combat phase is over, you're going to move on to the build-up phase. And the build-up phase will allow you to collect victory points, as, or XP, I should say, and gold. And that's going to be based on whether you defeated a monster or whether you defeated a player. Um, maybe you accomplished something on one of your cards. You'll take those coins and you'll place them in your inventory field. After that, you can buy items. Items in the shop have a certain gold value in the top right-hand corner, and based on that value is what you have to spend in order to get these items. Gathering items and gathering skills will give you victory points. Speaking of that, skills. You can spend three victory or XP points to gather new cards from your library, paying three of your specific XP, taking those cards and putting them into your current deck, which will then allow you to utilize them for the rest of the game, provided you can afford them based on the cost of your character's skill. Each of your characters is going to have a attack um, or, or basically different colored symbol that will work with the card. So if it says do X or do red damage to target, then it'd be like do two damage to a target if your red is two. Or if it says shield for two yellow, well, or shield for yellow and your yellow is two, you would shield for two, etc., etc. And so you'll be buying these cards from the shop and of course from your library. After you've done that, then you can go ahead and move on to end of game triggers. How that works is pretty simple. It's like the cleanup phase. If somebody has received nine or more victory points, the game will conclude. The other way it will conclude is if the third and final monster has been defeated. Then if that happens, you will all check your specific unique victory condition, or I should say end of game condition. And if you're successful, you will get uh, victory points uh, based on what the card says. Whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. If not, you're going to remove all combat damage from the field. You're going to move all the cards back into your current deck. You're going to move any of your stunned cards in the combat field to the stunned area. You are going to resolve your dodge card if it had flipped based on taking damage to give yourself one HP. And you're going to pass the leader to the next player going clockwise. Then reveal the next monster if one has been defeated. Refill the item deck for all the cards that are missing based on people buying them. And start over with the team up phase, allowing the leader to select one of the either gold or XP to give to all players, proceeding then on to drawing cards from the deck based on the monster, and then playing those cards in the combat phase. Build up, clean up, re refresh, and repeat. And like I said, once the game is over, based on whether or not you have a certain amount of victory points or whether you defeated that third monster, you'll check to see who has the most, and that will be the winner of the game, Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters. Now, there's a ton of cards. There's a ton of different things that you can do in the game based on what you have in your hand. The game is going to be going a back-and-forth type of a combat feel where I play my ones, then you play your ones, I play my twos, you play your twos, I play my threes, you play your threes. The monster will do any of their responses, can then continue. And of course, if you've attacked the monster more than once, the monster will continue to respond based on each attack you do to it. If you down players, if you down monsters, you're going to get rewards. And on the back of your round guide is a reward sheet. For every time you buy an item or a skill, you're gonna get a victory point. When you knock down a hero, you're gonna get a vict uh, XP, a gold, and you'll be able to um, do something else uniquely. Monsters uh, knocking down a hero will give players gold. Your hero gets knocked down, you're gonna lose points. And of course, if you kill a monster, there's a monster reward on that card that you'll get at the end of the game. There's also a bunch of symbols that are explained on this uh, chart here as well that will state how your cards work if you have any confusion among them. But that's basically the game Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters. And yes, there's quite a bit to this game, but I figured I'd give you the basic summary of how it works. 
So Shadows Hero and Monsters is kind of like a TCG mixed in with like a, a game like Warlords or like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. It has that kind of a feel to it. Uh, however, you don't need to buy any additional things once you pick this game up as it stands. It's kind of a standalone game that has the objective of addition. It's kind of like a LCG or living card game, which I know you probably technically can't say, but you're going to be buying new things to add to here. I think these might even be randomized. I'm not sure, but you can get additional 30 skill booster packs, uh, 30 skill card booster packs that you can kind of allow yourself to make your own unique library for the characters you're utilizing. In this game here, what I have, which is a prototype, has four different characters. Each of those characters has their own unique current deck. They have their own unique skills, their own unique character card that has all of their abilities. And, um, you're kind of playing them all differently. Like, for instance, when I'm playing Roland, Roland is kind of the defender. He kind of works with players and against players at the same time, kind of being a little bit tricky and also being very defensive. He has unique abilities that can protect him. Like, for instance, Song of Roland is going to allow him to basically heal himself up, flip this over, and gain invulnerability for a turn, and then it's gone. Whereas somebody like this character over here, which is Audie, Adi is going to have a unique ability called Eyes on You. It's a little card that you can move to different targets that will do additional damage each round based on where this is at. And certain cards of hers will allow her to move this card kind of around to do additional bonus damage. And so you have a defender, an attacker, you have a stealther, all kinds of unique characters that function different ways. Additionally, the monsters are unique as well. The monsters are going to have different abilities. They're going to have higher HP. All the characters have a certain amount of health. If you defeat them, you'll gain victory points or some type of bonus or some type of XP or gold. And as you go from one to the next, to the final one, that can signify not only victory, but also you'll gain a certain number of rewards. And they get better as the more monsters you fight, the more difficult the monsters are. And uh, typically, last hit rules apply, but separately. I have my own damage and you have your own damage. So if the monster has eight health and I do eight health to the monster first uh, from my damage, I will defeat the monster. Even if you have seven on there, I still need to do the eight damage in order for that monster to go away. And the first person to do that will defeat the monster and gain the rewards. Um, the game has beautiful artwork. It's very stylized. It feels a lot like um, some similar Magic the Gathering style artwork. It's really, really high quality. You can really tell that they took a lot of time to make sure that this game had some beautiful artwork. A ton of artists I see have been involved in making this, and uh, they do a really, really excellent job. This is probably one of the best... Yeah, it's probably one of the best kind of LCG, uh, TCG type of a card games uh, that I've seen for artwork that isn't one of the big, huge ones. This one has got a ton of time and effort put into it. The cards are very easy to understand. While there is a lot of information on them, you can really, really grasp what they do just by simply looking at it without even knowing how to play the game. There you go. There's your uh, activated abilities. That is your character's HP. Those are his stats. This is the character name, and this is his symbol. And all these cards have his symbol, which are all his starting deck. His his starting specific ability and even his starting dodge card and you have all this ready and available to you. The difference between even the items is simple. These starting items you can select one of and then the shop items just based on the backs. Really simple, really easy to use. The new items that you gain are going to give you unique stats like this uh, health element. Yeah, which you can attach to your character right next to it um, and it will give you some type of benefit and this one here is going to be two to your HP and so as you place them down next to your character these stats will increase right next to it which is a really really nice design. The graphic design in this game is excellent, the artwork is excellent, and the card quality is excellent as well. A really great standalone uh, two to even three player game as far as all of the design elements are incorporated. This game is got a bit of luck in it because uh, you are going to be able to draw cards from your deck. Uh, you're always going to have the same starting deck and so will the other players. And uh, you're going to have the opportunity to kind of strategically choose when to play what cards based on their numbers. Uh, but there's a limit to that, right? You have to play ones and ones and twos and twos and, two and threes and the threes skill time. Uh, the, the luck comes in to kind of who's going to be the first player. Will you get your damage off First, what cards does the monster provide? Because the monster deck is random. You might constantly be losing the ability to do damage to the monster by flipping over a card and it says, prevent five damage, prevent five damage, prevent five damage, while the other player is getting, oh, shuffle the cards back into the deck, or uh, every player loses one HP. Response cards from the monsters are really, really nasty, whereas some of the other cards are not so bad, and that is where the luck factors into the game, whereas the main bulk of the game, which is your character, has a ton of the skill, ton of the strategy, 
being able to create your own unique uh, library that you're trying to utilize to improve your character as the game goes on, spending that XP, putting new cards into your current deck, which you'll then be able to utilize at the beginning of the round to add that card to your hand, provided you meet the requirements. And most of the requirements for the cards are easily met. And because of the fact that all requirements are able to be met for all characters, there's a lot of customization of all involved in the game that you can add just with these two basic starting skill 30 card skill decks here that you can kind of incorporate to the game. High quality components. This is a great combat field. I would suggest if you're going to pick this game up to get the Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters mat. It gives you an idea of where everything is placed and you will then be notified where the combat field is. It's not too much more complicated than Magic, but it is a bit more. And if you're not really, really knowledgeable in this game, the first couple of games on their own will be a little bit challenging to realize where everything is placed because it does have a difference. There's not really a discard pile per se. Most of it is all based on your player board and most things go back into your current deck after you've utilized them and cards will be moved from left to right back into your current deck from your library cards will be discarded that are item cards and then there's cards that are equipped and there's just a ton of different cards involved in this game but in its core base concept like most TCGs it is a very simple straightforward game with a ton of deep strategy and complexity and the added kind of luck aspect of the monster is it really a PvE uh, not really I mean it kind of is PvE in the sense that you are fighting the monsters you don't have to fight the other players and you can beat the monsters and gain points and victory points and utilize them for experience and gold and buying certain cards and buying certain items and those will then allow you to increase your victory point total and if the monster is defeated you can tally up your points and win the game but you always want to attack other players there's a lot of cards in the game that involve you attacking other players sometimes you need to put them back down a notch and in order to do that it'll stop them from snowballing and snowballing is a possibility in this game that's one of the big things i've noticed if you uh start heading back behind other players start getting more stats and more skills you're going to have to ramp up you're not necessarily just going to be instantly able to access all the cards you want to access as quickly as you possibly can there's no benefit to being in last place uh, but there's also no benefit to somebody hitting you if you're in last place either so there is a bit of a mixy bouncy type of a feel to the game as well overall i'm highly satisfied with the art the graphic design the character design and how it's implemented as a game placement with the field is great and it feels great to utilize your cards. It has a rock, paper, scissors feel, which is nice because it kind of gets very, very complex, but it starts simple and you kind of push yourself into more complexity as you kind of integrate the cards you want into your starting deck. And that feels wonderful. Fighting the monster is cool. Being able to fight the characters or the monster and having that choice has kind of more of a social dynamic, which I didn't expect to see in this game is great as well. Not a huge fan of how the monster deck works and the fact that it's randomized and you might get unlucky and you might get lucky based on what the monster does to you. And yes, there is choice involved, which is nice, where players, the leader, will get to choose between the two cards where they're placed, but when it's not your turn, very much so expect to get a response or an attack as opposed to not. And so mainly on your turn is when you're going to be doing a lot better than on any other player's turn when they have the leader to start the game off with, or I guess the leader card in front of them. And I'm not really sure of a better way to do it, but it just kind of annoyed me every single time it was somebody else's turn with the leader, and I always got a card that was going to mess with me. In addition, whenever the monster did respond, I had a likelihood of getting a response more than other players just based on my luck of what was going to pop up. But they did a good job of mitigating that, and there's definitely more strategy in this game than there is luck, which is important to me in most TCG player games, especially with the fact that you're not shuffling a deck, you're not randomly drawing cards, you get to select what it is that you want. This is a game I can see a lot of people wanting to pick up. People who really enjoy TCGs, people who like LCGs, people who enjoy this kind of tactical combat utilizing one specific character with a variety of different uh, assets and items that they can kind of upgrade their character throughout gameplay is going to be something they're going to want to jump on. If you like high quality artwork and a solid TCG slash LCG type of an experience with a unique twist of fighting a monster, then Shadows, Heroes, and Monsters is going to be for you. If you don't like the added luck element of the monster, the fact that you might always, you might get kind of messed over sometimes, you might get uh, responses that kind of trigger against you when you don't want them to and there's a possibility of a snowball effect then you might not like it for me though overall a solid game and something i recommend you taking a look at down below in the link in the description thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board gamer review for the game shadows heroes and monsters if you want to pick up the game there's a link down below in the description like i said you can also go ahead and like comment and subscribe to this channel hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button watch our live stream every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst where we play games just like this one this week we're playing the 
Dog and Anastasia, where you can see us playing some pretty cool games that are gonna be coming up on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and donate to us on Patreon for one dollar. It'll help us greatly and maybe create more content, be able to do Discord stuff, live stream stuff, etc. etc. And if you would like, you can also go ahead and jump on Moonshell, a mermaid game. My wife made this game. It's up on our website, moonshellgame.com slash unfiltered games. So you can see what she did. It's a puzzle game. It funded on Kickstarter. And now we have extra copies left. So if you'd like to pick up that, you can as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to defeating these shadows uh, with my hero against the monster with you next time. And that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs>